In this example, we're asked to find out what is the equivalent force acting on this section of a gate that's in the middle of a wall that is submerged in some water. So water rho equals 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. And then once we know what the force is, we're also asked to find the horizontal reactions that would be required for the plate to remain in equilibrium. So on this side, we're asked to find out what are these two reactions to keep this plate in equilibrium. We're also told in the problem that the plate is 1.5 meters wide. So that's kind of 1.5 meters, if you can imagine, going out of the plane of paper. So this distance here would be 1.5 as well. So that actually means that our plate is 1.5 meters in height, but also 1.5 meters in width. So it's actually a square plate. Okay, so to start this example, like we did on the previous examples, we're going to need to calculate what the value of the pressure P1 is and what the value of the pressure of P2 is. However, unlike the previous example, now we have a trapezoidal loading. And again, like a previous video on distributed loading, we can choose to do find out the centroid by integration, the total force by integration. We could find out where the centroid of the trapezoid is, maybe by doing a quick web search, or and this is how we're going to treat it in this problem, is get this pressure block and split it into a triangular section and a rectangular section. So let's kind of zoom in and redraw what we're talking about. So we have our gate, goes out of plane 1.5 meters and has this trapezoidal loading upon it and we're going to reduce this trapezoidal loading into two parts one here so that starts at zero and then we have this dimension which is p2 minus p1 and then we're going to add that so to the rectangular loading which has a constant value of P1. So the first thing we do is calculate the pressures P1 and P2. So P1 equals rho G H1 and let's go back to our diagram. So H1 is 1.5 meters. So that there is H1. And H2 is at the bottom of this gate, which is H2, which equals three meters. Therefore we have 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.81 times by 1.5 meters height equals 14,715 newtons per meter squared. Likewise, P2 equals rho G H2, which equals 1,000 times 9.81 multiplied by 3, which equals 29,430 newtons per meter squared. And one of the other quantities we'd like to know that the area of the plate equals 1.5 meters high multiply by 1.5 meters out of plane width which equals 2.25 meters squared 
going back to this diagram now we're going to define two equivalent forces and for this one on the rectangular section which we know acts at halfway down we're going to call this equivalent force F1 and the equivalent force from the triangle system we're going to call F2 so we can then calculate the total equivalent force. So F1 now is equal to the average pressure. In this case, the pressure is constant. So the average pressure is P1. And multiplied by the area over which that pressure is acting, which is 2.25 meters squared. And that gets us 33.11 kilonewton so I've converted there from newtons to kilonewtons in the process and the centroid from the top of the plate so let's be clear where we're measuring from we could measure right from the top here but actually for this example we really have a free body diagram that's self-contained so we're going to measure our centroid from the top of the plate so the centroid x bar 1 is equal to a half of the height and the height was 1.5 meters so therefore is 0.75 meters and again write a quick note from top of plate and this makes your calculation useful for someone reading your calculations to repeat later, rather than trying to guess where 0.75 is measured from. And we do the same process for the equivalent force F2. So F2 is equal to the the average pressure multiply the area that it's acting on. And so now the average pressure is equal to half of the, so let's go back to our diagram. We have this triangular distribution and we wish to know this distance, actually this pressure here. And so from here, We'll have P2 minus P1 will get us the total distance and we want half of that pressure. So we have P2 minus P1 and then multiply by the area 2.25 and this gets us F2 equals 16.55 kilonewtons and x bar 2 again measured from the top of the plate equals 2 thirds multiplied by the height of the plate which is 1.5 so equals 1 meter and again from top of plate Make the calculations easier for someone to read. So now we have all of the forces or equivalent forces. Now we're ready to, to calculate the reactions on this plate. And to do that, we draw the free body diagram of the plate in isolation. So we have our plate. And I'm going to call the top A, the bottom B. We have a reaction here, RAX, and a reaction at the bottom, RBX. A halfway line going in the other direction coming from the fluid, we have F1. And at the bottom, we have another force two thirds down, F2. So we label up those dimensions that we need to know. We know that this is 
0.75. This distance here is 1. And the total distance is 1.5. So first of all, I'm going to take moments about A, the top of the plate, where I've measured the centroids from. So we're taking moments about A. So I'm just about to keep the free body diagram on the page. And I have F1 multiplied by the lever arm from a 0 0.75. Plus I have, still going in the anti-clockwise direction, I have F2 multiplied by the lever arm from A of 1. And opposing that, so going in the clockwise direction, I have RBX multiplied by the lever arm of 1.5 meters from A must be equal to zero. And now I can substitute the values that I know. So I have 33.11 times 0 0.75 plus 16.55 multiplied by one equals, so I'm taking this minus sign and take the whole term to the right hand side, R B X multiplied by 1.5 and I can rearrange all of this equation in terms of R B X and this gets me that R B X equals 27.6 kilonewtons. And so we know RBX, and now I'll take some of the forces in the X direction to determine our AX. So some of the forces in the X direction. So I have, pointing to the right, I have F1 plus F2 equals the terms pointing to the left, which is RAX plus RBX. And I substitute the known values for F1, F2, and RBX, and I get that RAX equals 22.1 kilonewtons. And at this moment, the problem is completely solved, but as ever, I think the word of warning is find another equation to check your